Martha Stewart has lived in some impressive properties over the years, which can be expected from the queen of cooking and home decor who has long had her own lifestyle brand. Her main property is an impressive 156 acre estate in Katona, New York, which is full of beautiful gardens, greenhouses, horse stables, and much more. The farmhouse estate boasts seven structures across the land with some of the spaces dedicated to her various animals, including her five horses and other homes in the property utilized for guests, staff, and entertaining. When it comes to Martha, she occupies the main house on the property, also known as the Winter House, which offers multiple bedrooms, a porch room, and an attic that was transformed into a gym. Not to mention, Martha added a huge 4,000 square foot addition onto the Winter House, which included a spacious and modern kitchen. Dubbed Cantito Corners, Martha Stewart's current sprawling farmhouse is 153 acres of land that she purchased back in 2000 for the whopping price of $15.2 million and located in Katona, New York. Sold to Martha by the family of Ruth Sharp, a millionaire who had owned the property for 50 years before her death, this estate is composed of several buildings, seven in total, scattered throughout the grounds, making it look more like a village. Martha has tended to her peaceful farm property for over 20 years, and each year she seems to add more and more to beautify and upkeep it. Martha uses the main home on the property as her residence, which is a three-story farmhouse first built in 1925 and often referred to as the winter house. This structure features a spacious front porch, a fireplace, and stylish dormer windows. After taking on the property, Martha reached out to architect Alan Greenberg to expand the main farmhouse. Not only did he turn an old garage that used to hold farming equipment into a brand new entertaining space just off the kitchen, but he also took a nearby barn and turned it into an office or a project room for Martha's endless amounts of arts and crafts. According to the Martha Stewart blog, the huge property also includes multiple gardens, greenhouses, stables, grazing fields, staff and tenant quarters, and storage facilities. Some areas are used for Martha's many animals that call the property home, including her five horses. More recently, Martha even invited MTV Cribs inside to tour Kentito Corners, where we could see how she's decorated many of the interiors in her signature and timeless style. Martha's main home, the Winter House, was repainted when she moved in, in a color which she named Bedford Grey, due to the grey tones the cold mornings cast on the property during the winter. The apple trees, which were seen in Martha's house tour bring life to the property, and according to her, the apples even taste amazing. At the end of the driveway, you'll find Martha's stunning winter house, where inside and out, many modern touches have been added over the years. Martha shared with MTV how the porch was newly enclosed, which was also ideal for her 14 canaries who call it home. The enclosed porch was painted to match the existing house and offers six sliding doors that double as large windows. Aside from the birds who occupy this space, there are also plenty of plants adding to the beauty, while the area also serves as an office space with additional seating where one can work right or simply unwind. This porch is an impressive addition, but it's not the most impressive. During the renovations, Martha actually had the entire front of the home turned to face the other way. So these days, it looks towards the apple trees. She also added on a huge 4,000 square foot addition, which included a large chef style kitchen. The entrance to Martha's home is classic and simple with large green plants added the perfect pop of color. The monochromatic space while century old cedar paddock fencing was added to create grazing fields for the horses and animals. Inside the elegant dining room offers a long table with 12 wicker chairs and plenty of space to entertain, while plants in sparkling gold pots align it end to end. The large windows here open their room up, allowing the natural light to come in while most of the space boasts a neutral color palette. Martha's impressive chef's kitchen at her house is reportedly a throwback to her first home kitchen in Turkey Hill, which featured the same hanging pots and pans. This beautifully customized kitchen has seen many recipes from Martha over the years, taking photographs of her recipes in this very spot. The storage is open and airy for easy access, while cooking and the kitchen
kitchen is connected to the main house by a servery and a sprawling dining room. Martha transformed one of the winter hus rooms, which is said to be on the attic level, into a home gym. There are several workout equipment options to choose from, including treadmills, stairs masters, weightlifting machines, and even a massage table. The upstairs gym is the perfect place to exercise when it's too cold to go horseback riding or garden. In addition to Martha's main residence, there's also a colonial structure that dates back to 1770, which once served as the original home for the property called Summer House. There's also a cottage, a guest house known as Maple Avenue House, and a more contemporary home built towards the back of the property. Rounding things out are a series of horse stalls, barns, and greenhouses. Martha shared on her blog how she's been continuously renovating not only her home, but the animals' homes too. The farm owner has made recent upgrades to the chicken coops and equipment on the property, and in 2020 she hired a team to surround the coop with edging stone, change and even steps and install new feeders. As you might expect, there are a variety of animals at Kentito Corners aside from her horses, such as 150 chickens, 5 donkeys and some geese, while Stewart also cares for several birds, dogs and 2 cats. Elsewhere on the massive property, there's at least one swimming pool, a tennis court, and some other amenities. For a finishing touch, Martha imported cobblestone from Elizabeth, New Jersey, the state where she was born and raised, to pave the courtyards throughout the property. If that farmhouse isn't enough, when Martha's looking to get away for a little R&R, she also has a couple vacation properties that are even more enviable. For example, she has a historic house located in Maine, which she calls Skylands, and it sits on Mount Desert Island. Island. Like many of Martha's other homes, this property is steeped in history. Completed in 1925 for Edsel and Eleanor Ford of the Ford Motor Company, Skylands is sprawled across 63 acres of pristine woodlands. The Ford family would summer here every year until 1980. 17 years later, Martha would buy the property for herself for $5.4 million in 1997. At the time of the sale, everything in the home was included, which meant that Martha didn't have to buy a single plate, even though she's no doubt added her share over the years. This massive stone house sits on top of a hill and contains a dozen bedrooms alongside 8.5 baths and nearly 15,000 square feet of space. It also includes granite paving throughout the interior, as well as beamed ceilings. Rounding out the additional spaces is a cathedral-like main hall, a sun-filled living room, a cool flower room, a stunning library, and a kitchen to die for. But as eye-catching as the interior of this place is, when Martha's spending time here, it really is all about those views. Over the years, Martha's taken to spending more and more of her free time here, and it's gradually become the favorite of her homes. In 2015, she decided to expand the property by purchasing a $4.2 million six acre neighboring estate called Ox Hill Lodge. This addition may be less grand than Skylands, but it still includes a main residence that boasts nine beds, 7.5 bathrooms, and roughly 6,800 square feet of living space. Now that we've checked out where Martha Stewart calls home, that'll bring today's video to a close. But before we go, answer this question for me. If you owned an old farmhouse as your home, what features would you keep classic and rustic and which would you modernize? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer and if you'd like to check out another tour before you log off then stay tuned because next up we'll check out where Paula Dean calls home. Bye! In these videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. There are a few restaurateurs, cooks, authors, or even TV personalities quite as famous as Georgia's own Paula Dean. Sure, the queen of good old fashioned clog your arteries cooking has most definitely seen her habits fall out of style over these past few years. That didn't stop her from becoming synonymous with the American culinary scene. And personally, to me, that food looks delicious. Delicious. Anyways, the culture of the American South is closely aligned with its cuisine, which is why the massive estate Paula called home for close to two decades was a luxurious waterfront residence located on the exclusive Wilmington Island near Savannah, Georgia. There, Paula's resort-like property known as Riverbend came to embody the natural warmth and charm in those American South celebrate as part of their rich heritage. 
Paula bought this 14,500 square foot custom built French Caribbean style home in 2006 for just $3.75 million. At the time, her desire to live here was less about the size of the home than its location. Situated on the Wilmington River Bend, like the one in Alabay, Georgia, where Paula spent years on her grandparents' estate, the similarities between the two were enough for Paula to instantly fall in love. But as much as she might have loved it, she still understood took a complete rebuild after her purchase, telling Vi Magazine, We saw we couldn't do what we wanted there with renovations, so we bought it as a teardown and started again. Considering how busy Paula was at the time hosting a show for the Food Network while also sometimes entertaining hundreds of people at once and filming cooking demonstrations from her kitchen, she decided to redesign the house in a way that would help her fulfill her contract obligations. Private and secluded, Paula Deen's longtime estate is accessed through a gated entrance with a beautiful driveway that's enhanced with lush landscaping. Even with eight bedrooms as well as nine bathrooms, this expansive property still manages to maintain a warm and inviting atmosphere that includes luxury details like charming salvaged fixtures, soaring ceilings, and exposed beams at every turn. Never happier than when she's cooking, Paula made sure that her open concept kitchen would become the heart of the entire estate. This vast room has a high vaulted ceiling, which was inspired by Paula's many trips to the Caribbean. It also includes a wooden table and chair set, provides the perfect spot for intimate family meals. More formal dining can take place on the other side of the room, where Paula has placed a gorgeous dining room table. Adjoining this area is a butler's pantry that's nearly an exact carbon copy of the type that you might find in a stately English home. It's fitted with antique dressers as well as shelves to hold Paula's china and silver. Her most prized possessions in this space are a silver cupboard and a nearby shelving unit, both of which are antiques. Speaking of old things, Dean also bought wood from a 200-year-old Savannah restaurant to finish the flooring throughout the connecting hallways of her home. Over in the great room, a buffet sideboard has been custom fitted with concealed refrigerating and heating drawers. You know, just in case you're looking for something hot or cold to snack on in a pinch. Timeless chandeliers also hang from the ceiling above and create an enchanting atmosphere. And there's the sitting area near the fireplace that offers views of the river beyond. In addition to a very accommodating guest quarters located on the home's second wing, the main building also holds Paula's favorite spot of all, her bathroom. She told Vi Magazine, It's actually a bathroom come living room, so spacious. I have managed to fit three sofas in there along with the tub, boasting a spa quality bathtub and a spacious vanity area finished with fine marble work. This bathroom is truly one of a kind, and so is the bedroom that it's attached to. With a private terrace and a custom walk-in closet, there's simply nothing more or that Paula could possibly want when it comes to her own private space. But of course, for someone with as much skill in the kitchen as Paula, one cooking space simply wouldn't cut it. And to round off her home, she installed an outdoor kitchen that her husband, Michael, largely considers his own. Out here is a farmhouse dining table set which can seat 12 in addition to nearby bar stools where guests can watch the chef cook. Just beyond that is a pool boasting a dive-in theater with a pop-up screen for swimmers to take in some cinema while practicing their breaststroke. I mean, that's pretty cool. Elsewhere on the grounds are two guest cottages along with a three bedroom apartment situated on the second floor of a 10,000 square foot barn. The bottom floor here has also been repurposed into an eight car garage. Long story short, there's nearly an endless number of ways to enjoy yourself at Riverbend, which is why it's kind of shocking that after nearly 20 years here, Paula and her hubby decided to list the estate in 2015 for $12.5 million. Apparently, even for a place as nice as this, that price tag was a little too high. Over the next few years, Paula would slash away at that number until the home was being marketed for $7.25 million. Shortly after, it sold in 2020, but the closing price was never publicly listed, although it was touted as being the highest residential sale in Chatham County 
history. When news first broke that Paula Dean was moving on from Riverbend, People magazine reported she was sticking around Savannah, but no one knew exactly where. As it turns out, with the sale having happened at the offset of the pandemic, Paula and Michael moved into their son Bobby's guest house. When asked to discuss the living arrangement, Bobby told South Mag, We're a close family, we always have been. When my mom said they were selling the house, I told her we have a perfectly good guest house and I could use built-in grandparents. She said, are you sure? We might be there for 30 days or more. They have been there a year. Living in such close proximity gave Paula a bundle of time to spend with her grandchildren, but it's also afforded her the opportunity to start something new. With the pandemic having canceled a number of her personal appearances, Paula was looking for something to do with herself. That's when Bobby suggested she start her own YouTube show, which is how Quarantine Cooking was born. Averaging tens of thousands of viewers, these bite-sized cooking sites segments were originally filmed in Riverbend's kitchen before Paula officially moved out. But eventually, she shifted her location from there to the home that she and Michael bought back in 2004 when they were first married. This second Savannah property is said to be valued at $1.3 million. It includes three bedrooms, three bathrooms, as well as 5,646 square feet of space. As you've now no doubt come to expect from a Paula Dean abode, this home includes a marvelous kitchen with all the bells and whistles, wooden floors, marble backsplash, not to mention a large kitchen island and a fridge. Opposite the kitchen is the home's formal dining room that's right next to a series of picture frame windows providing pleasant views of the backyard. And right around the corner from there is the home's living room with a stone fireplace and a series of French doors that lead directly outside. Since returning to this address in late 2021, Paula has begun renovating the residence and is still very much in the thick of transforming this place into her ultimate dream home. If anyone deserves to enjoy retirement, it's certainly someone who's worked as hard as Paula Dean has throughout her many decades on this planet. I mean, she might not be everyone's cup of tea and her calorie rich serving sizes definitely aren't for everyone. but. There is simply no denying the impact that she made on the American cooking scene. All right, everyone, that's gonna bring this latest house tour to a close. Thank you so much for watching. And before you head out, consider answering the following question. At what age would you eventually want to downsize into a smaller home, if ever? Let me know when you think it's time to start living the simpler life in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. So